Uh, John Blackledge of Cowan joins us now. Let's talk some tech. John, what a, what a market we're, we're in right now. I was looking at the chart, a six-month chart, and if you were to show me that six-month chart, of even the stocks you cover, but erased the dates and prices, I would think you were showing me October 2018 through March 2019 with, with that yeah. Christmas Eve low. But we know that's not the case. The economy has been dramatically impacted here. So, so what are the risks? Yeah, I mean, uh, so, so we're uh, w when COVID happened, we we started to do a bi-monthly uh, consumer tracker survey, and we're seeing some mixed things from the consumer. So the consumer would be like a, a key risk for a lot of these platforms. And while in our our mid-May survey, consumer indicated that their spend in the next month would be uh, the same or more, and it was up from from a month prior. COVID nineteen fears continue to rise as the U.S. starts to reopen. For instance. Just people feel less safe um, uh, in mid-May versus our, our end of April and our mid-April surveys about re-entering every category we track, retail stores, restaurants, gyms, et cetera. Um, so, so if consumer sentiment continues this way, like our, our view based on the data is that the digital platform should continue to benefit. And, and as you called out, like these are players in e-commerce, online grocery, food delivery, home entertainment, home fitness. So you know, the outperformers during the crisis um, and the companies that we continue to like are Amazon, Wayfair, Netflix, Uber, and Peloton, all kind of exposed uh, to mm -hmm. this and getting that really that pull forward of demand that we think could be, you know, somewhat more permanent um, as we, as the U.S. Um, continues to kind of uh, reopen. So, so, John, how should an investor think about this then? Is your assumption that this crisis is leading to massive behavioral changes and therefore faster share gains for the tech giants? And, and if so, didn't the bull case for them assume that they were going to gain this share anyway? Is it just that they're going to have to spend less to achieve it now? Yeah, um, I'll give you an example. Uh, online grocery, 36% uh, of, of people we surveyed in mid-May purchased groceries online. That was almost uh, a double the penetration from a year ago. Uh, so, so we're seeing this pull forward of demand. Um, and again, we think some of these changes will be permanent. And so, um, you know, uh, a third of these people uh, were, were ordering growth that, that, that ordered online. We're picking up at the curb. Um, and and so if it's uh, an Amazon, for instance, uh, who, you know, who, uh, Amazon, uh, obviously, and some other uh, uh, online grocery players. John, I, I get the I get the thesis that you've developed here and, and, and the case for some of these names. However, many of them have not only rallied from their March lows, they're now at new all-time highs. I, what do you think of valuations here? Uh, has the opportunity already come and gone for investors to get into some of these names? Yeah, I, I don't I, I don't think so. Uh, it's like for Amazon, uh, Amazon, for instance, uh, we're at a twenty seven hundred dollar price target, so still some upside there. Uh, Wayfair, we're at $200 price target. Uh, Uber, we're at, I think, at $55. Um, uh, Peloton, um, they're still upside there. So I do I do think they're still upside. I totally get um, they, they've been big outperformers relative to the S&P, um, but, but definitely think there's room to go. And, it, and it, again, it, it's, it's about, and what we're tracking bi-monthly is demand, and demand for these platforms uh, we think will continue to be elevated and, and sustained and hence, I think the stocks can continue to kind of inch upward. Now, I don't think um, they're going to gap up, but I think they can continue continue to inch upward as we as we get through the year.